Hey, this is Tom with Avidyne, and today I want to talk about flying visual approaches with the IFT 440. We'll give a quick overview and how the configuration and setup works, and then we'll go through some sample flight plan. First of all, a visual approach is a non-instrument approach used as an aid for stabilized approach to a runway when flying VFR. A visual approach consists of a single flight plan leg aligned with the runway heading, terminating at a runway threshold. Visual approaches are non-precision and for use in VMC only, as I mentioned, and are intended to provide enhanced situational awareness and a stabilized approach. And a stabilized approach is a safer approach. Flying visual approaches is good practice for when flying actual instrument approaches. To fly visual approaches on the Avidyne IFDs, any of them, you'll need uh, AviOS 10.3 or later. Uh, that's when that feature was added. Visual approaches are for all runways at all airports in the JEP database, including private strips, but they must have a defined threshold. And you can look that up on the Info tab. Now, this is on a 5-series screen, but if you go into the Info tab for any given airport, if it has a lat long associated with the runway thresholds, uh, then it'll have a visual approach. If it doesn't have any lat longs listed, then visual approaches are not available for that airport. So you can always check there to see. You activate a visual approach just like you would a, an instrument approach. With There's a line select key that says activate visual. And one of the things you need to do is make sure visual approaches are enabled in setup mode. Otherwise, you will not get offered visual approaches as a choice at the airport uh, when you do the pull down menu. And I'll take you through that. There's a single leg coming off the runway. It's an extended center line, basically, off the runway. But we have the ability to show base and downwind legs that you can you know, manually fly. There's no guidance on the uh, downwind and base legs, but it gives you a visual reference. Uh, you'll see a, a discontinuity, which is a gap that precedes a visual approach. And that means it requires activation of the visual approach. And the guidance for a visual approach ends a tenth of a mile from the threshold. And that uses approach mode scaling, which is three-tenths of a nautical mile. You can customize the descent angle, the pattern width, and the glide slope. We'll talk about that in a minute. One of the things you want to do when you're thinking about a visual approach, obviously, is look up your airport in your facilities directory and make sure you know whether they're flying right traffic or left traffic. And you can see here, we can select straight in, left base, right base, left downwind, right downwind. Here's the visual approaches down here if they're enabled. So to configure for visual approaches, you go into the AUX page setup tab, scroll down to the FMS settings and expand that out and you'll see visual approaches. Make sure it's on. Under visual approach settings, expand that down and you can adjust the final length, the pattern width, and the glide slope angle. The final length, the distance from the runway threshold at which the base leg intercepts the final approach course. The default's one mile, but you can set up like to a 10 mile uh, extended center line. The pattern width, this is the base length distance. That's this distance here. Distance between the runway and the downwind leg. We default to 1.2 nautical miles, but it is adjustable here from a half mile to 9.9. .9. And then your glide slope, we default to 4 degrees. This is a visual approach, but there's no obstacle clearances provided. So uh, being able to come in a little higher is actually always safer in terms of having clearances in the event of an emergency. But you can adjust the glide slope from 3 degrees to 5 degrees in tenth of a degree increments. If you have it hooked to an external HSI like an Aspen, it will swing the runway heading regardless of your position when a visual approach is activated. So it's going to want to show that inbound course. It's a, thinking about it like it's an ILS. And then your D-bar will be here where you fly to. But you're going to manually want to fly the dashed line, in this case for the uh, left base, to intercept. And of course, a lateral deviations are provided to the final approach course. And advisory vertical deviations are also provided once the aircraft track is at most 90 degrees yeah. to the final approach course. Yeah. 
So therefore, on downwind entry, the VDI will remain flagged until the aircraft completes the turn to base. This is important too. If there are no legs in the flight plan after the destination associated with the visual approach, the visual approach will remain active even after passing the runway threshold. Remember, there's no published mist for a, a visual approach. Therefore, you can stay in closed traffic pattern and continue to receive guidance to the final approach course without ever touching the FMS, and you can do touch and goes and have that have that vertical and lateral guidance on the final approach. Okay, let's bring up our simulator. So I've got Bedford to, uh, to Nashua loaded. It's not active yet. I'm sitting on the ground. I'm on runway five, ready to take off. I mean, again, I've got my simulator. I'm going to explain this just so you see what I'm doing. I'm going to have it on autopilot mode, so I'm going to dial in the runway heading, which is uh, runway 5, because otherwise the simulator will just take off. If I look, go over here to the tolerance, I see I'm sitting on the runway. So obviously on takeoff, we're going to fly runway heading until we're, we're uh, cleared on course. So let's uh, go to FMS and activate our flight plan. So let's unpause our simulator. I'm going to run it at two times speed. And if you want me to see uh, on the map mode here, you can see us taking off here. Okay, so they clear us, so we're going to uh, just Turn on follow the flight plan now that we're up at altitude. Okay, we're flying on course here. Let's go ahead and go to the FMS page and load the uh, visual approach. So we'll just hit the proc button here. And then we'll scroll down to our visual approaches at the end here. There's our visual for 3-2, and you'll see we've got an extended center line. If I was to put in 1-4, and you'd see the extended center line out the other direction, of course. So let's go to 3-2, which is what we set out to do. And then we will accept that. We hit Enter, and we're going to do a left base. You can see if we did a left downwind, we'd have a downwind leg, which we could put that on there because we're going to do touch and goes. We're going to circle back, but let's do a left base. That shows it's coming in from the south here, and it's left traffic. So we enter that. We will have a gap in route until we activate the visual. So there's our extended center line. Let's activate the visual. And then you would just hand fly it in. And of course, we don't have a CDI on here, but you would see your lateral and vertical deviation. You can see here we're on the final approach to the runway. The 3D synthetic vision gives you a cool picture and then you can watch your CDI as well of course. So that's it for visual approaches. Thanks for watching. If, if you have any questions feel free to contact pilot support at avidine.com or you can reach me at marketing at avidine.com. Thanks everybody and have a great day.